All right, we are back. No football, but we're back. This is the one and only OSB Sports Podcast Show. Of course, I'm Scott Matthews, and I am joined by my two co-hosts. First of all, the one and only Teddy Brooks, CEO of the Sports Profits. What's up, Teddy? Yeah, glad to be here. I'm excited. We got no football, but we still got a lot of a lot of bets to win. I think we're going to be good. We're keeping the Big Kahuna offset because the Big Kahuna's got a little something going on. We don't want him near us because we don't want to get you know catch whatever he has. But he's that determined to be here. The one and only Big Kahuna of OSB Sports. What's up, Big Kahuna? How you feeling? Well, I'm feeling pretty damn good, but I think you look good. Sports- Thank you. I think the books put a hit out on me after what I did to them on Super Bowl, man. Well, you, so, were, you were the only amigo of the three of us that got the uh, right side of the game. Uh, I dominated on my props, but you did have the winner uh, of the Super Bowl. Congrats yeah. to you. If you dig a little deeper, I had a teaser. I had the under. I won by a hair. And uh, we had some interesting props. Just goes to show you. The odds makers couldn't get the biggest game of the year right. They put the wrong team favorite. So what does that tell you when you got to look at these small college basketball games going forward? So don't always just listen to the odds makers, people. I don't know about that, Teddy. What do you think? I I, I I think they have the right. I respectfully disagree. I think think the 49ers dominated the whole game. They outplayed them. Um, I think a little bit of poor coaching at the end lost the game. And, of course, Patrick Mahomes, right? Patrick Mahomes won that game with his with his legs. Game four downs Th- twice. They weren't <laughs> they weren't prepared to. Uh, and look at this. I'm just going to throw something out there. I'm not saying anything's fixed, but the Chiefs <laughs> led the league oh, in boy. offensive holding this year. They led the league in offensive holding calls. They did not get one offensive holding call yeah. called against them in this game. Listen, there weren't a lot of penalty. I will yeah. say. Well, both San Fran started with a lot of penalties early in that game, yeah. jumping off sides, making mistakes, you know, killing, you know, kills drives. At the end of the day, that's what happens, you know. In, in football, you know, the the penalties and all the crazy things, it's just a it's just a game changer. It's a game of inches, so it all adds up. But at the end of the day, there are some of the defensive schemes. I, they fired the defensive coordinator right after that game. There were some times where they should have pressed blitz and they pulled off. There were some times where they should have pulled off and they blitzed and uh yeah Mahomes carved a big hole uh I don't know on those fourth down plays it was amazing how uh they just let him go and he just ran what 18 22 he had yards big 13 yards rips of is, yardage is he, is he is he the goat that's the question is he the goat well I I I would say at this point in time no not yet maybe another one maybe a couple more I can't first of all Brady beat him to win one of his Super Bowls Brady won seven. Mahomes has won three. Yeah, they've won three out of, what, the last five Super Bowls, I think? Three out of the last six. The thing I don't is, know about the GOAT. Here's the thing. Brady, uh, Mahomes said himself, I'm not the GOAT because Brady right. beat me. You know, he said himself. So. Exactly. And not only beat him, dominate was it like 31-9 to nine game. Well, here's the thing about Mahomes. He's had that same core team. Yeah, he lost some receivers, obviously, but he's always had uh, Kelsey. He's had Andy Reid there. So I'd like to see what he could do, like – like Brady went to another team and still did it, right. right? So so in his first year. I think that's what really cemented Brady as the goat was going to Tampa Bay and still doing it. Right. That's really what put the the nail in his goat coffin. I'm not wearing my goat hat today. I see that. Yeah, wow. And you didn't to, give it to me, so I, I decided guess, to switch it up. Maybe the Vic Kahuna's got it. He gave you the uh, the hat <laughs> cuz you were the only one that did have Kansas City. But anyways, listen, that's that's all said and done, guys. We're moving on. It's all about different things in our world. And uh, Big Kahuna is going to have some good, big news about some things we got coming up a little bit later on in the show that we're going to be moving and grooving uh, this year into some different directions. So I'm pretty damn excited about that. Real, real, real quickly, I'm looking at 2025 Super Bowl odds. They got Sam Fran favorite. Nah. Bet against looking it. Right here. They can't win it. I don't know. They haven't won it since Montana. It's, it, unless I'm looking at it, says San Fran five to one, KC plus six fifty. I think Raiders. it's gonna be a long shot this year. I got this vibe that like plus, some surprise plus team. Detroit plus twelve hundred. 
Interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's too. Well, you know what? Let's save that for maybe the summertime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> way, way too, way too far in advance. We're, we're, let's let's well, lay off football. Well, we got nothing to talk about in July. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know what? We got a lot to talk about now because this is the time of the year that gets pretty damn exciting in the world of basketball. We're gonna we're gonna be heating up with some amazing college basketball the month of February, going into the tournaments in March, and then the big dance, obviously, in the middle of March, all the way to the beginning of April. We got the NBA right now on hiatus. They went on hiatus on Friday for the All Star break, so there's some exciting things going on there. We'll talk a little bit about the NBA, what you guys think about any surprises or who's up, you know, who's looking right, who's looking wrong at this point in time. But I wanted to kick it off uh, with Teddy because. I know he's got some big games lined up with the, you know, college basketball this week, and obviously that's uh, his uh, wheelhouse sport. I love college basketball, and I know the big kahunas into the NBA uh, mainly, but uh, definitely want to talk about some key matchups on Saturday. We got a big board of action in college hoops. Big board, a lot of ranked teams playing. If you want to kick it off, by oh, all I'm means, gonna kick let's it do off. it. Or unless you have something to say before. I got, yeah, I gotta. I want to just run through the top ten against the spread teams, full game and first half in college basketball. I'm going to keep it really quick. Top 10 teams against the spread, full game. Minnesota, number one, 21 and three. Texas A&M, CC, 17 and five. Richmond, 18 and six. Cal State, Northridge, who I just had, 18 and six. Green Bay, 18 and seven. I'm just going to run through the next. Uh, who the hell would be playing those teams? New right? Mexico, <laughs> Iowa State, Moorhead State, Troy, Eastern Washington, you are making big money if you're betting any of these teams, so keep your eye out for these teams right here. First half teams, James Madison, 22-4 and four against yeah, the spread first good half. Ball. Playing Can, good ball. UConn, of course, great team. Grand Canyon, Utah State, Auburn, Sam Ford, Purdue, Houston, Moorhead State, North Carolina. i got to be honest with you before I kick it over to Big Kahuna. I think there's only two teams in college basketball that stand out right now. Everyone else has just fallen into the fray. But uh, Purdue and Connecticut, I mean, they're just absolutely a class above the rest at this point in time. Ranked, ranked teams are just getting yeah. killed. Oh, left by and unranked right. teams, and, and, yeah. And here's the trend. You see the numbers on Here's that? the trend. Big, like, okay, so unranked teams at home – Ranked teams coming in, yeah, traveling. It's like 50-50, right? No. I think ranked team, the unranked teams are covering the spread 60-something yeah, percent of the time right, right now. 50-50 maybe on the, right, exactly. right, on the Straight outright. Up. Yeah. But again, so here's what that shows me. These are young kids. They go into these environments, these hostile. College basketball has some real tough, hostile yeah. environments. It's definitely. And, and they can't handle it because they're not professional. So watch out when you see an unranked team going to, uh, hosting a ranked team, especially when the unranked team is favorite against the ranked team. Yeah, check those numbers out. Yeah, they even get more interesting. And then we'll pass it to the Kahuna, and then I'll talk about All my right. games. All right, big Kahuna. I know uh, you're not you're not feeling your best, and we really appreciate you taking no, no, the time no, no. to be I, with I, us today. I, I, I did some work for tomorrow, and hey, let's not forget about NBA All Star Game. I know it's more of a show than a game, but you know the East is. Uh, favorite two and a half it seems the total every year just increases i remember it was 250 280 right 364 yeah nuts 364. i mean so they got to average about uh eight points a minute if you think they, about they play, it they four baskets OD. yeah it's it's just a, it's just obviously a show but We're they could do it they've been going over a lot lately and there's it, totally it, a lot of you, high scoring you're betting the overs, you're making money over the years. I'm not really going to comment to 364. Right. Uh, Who's but, your best no. bet on Saturday? You have a well, best I, bet? I, I, College I basketball? Right, I went right to the top. You mentioned UConn. I mean, what can you say about UConn? But interesting matchup tomorrow. Number four, Marquette. Now, no doubt this is a prelude to the Big East tournament. Last year, Marquette beat them two out of three times. UConn is at home. The line is seven and a half. I think UConn's going to want to make a statement and cover that number tomorrow at home against Marquette because they are going to be seeing each other later in the tournaments. So That's going to be a great like, matchup. Eight in a row for Marquette going into the game, 13 yeah. straight for Connecticut. Line is currently seven and a half points, which is probably a decent number for UConn because they're always a huge favorite. 
against whoever their opponents are. They're, they're just they're going to want to make a statement, though. I think, and uh, I, I I could see them winning by uh, nine, ten points or more on that game. You, I like UConn. Okay. Anything else? Well, I mean, I'm looking at a couple of games here. Of course, you got you know Duke playing Florida State. That's not ranked. Uh, you know, FSU 12, 11, and one. None of these teams are doing that great against the spread. Uh, you know, Duke on the road has not been anything special this year. Correct. They're, 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 they've covered two out of the last five. FSU has beaten some decent teams, Wake Forest, Miami Hurricanes. Uh, I think FSU puts up a little fight here, man. And I'll, I'll take them plus the, uh, the five and a half to squeak in a cover. Well, for a team that's not playing so that bad, I mean, uh, they're nineteen and five, Duke, and they have been turning it around of late, and uh, they are uh, moving up the moving up the the ladder in the top, you know, top echelon of teams out there. But yeah, FSU is just they don't have the program they've had the last couple of years. I mean, they are a weaker type program, but Duke does seem to f- find a way not to you know not to pour it on on certain games. So you're yeah, thinking and- that this could be that type of game where. They might just come lackadaisical into this game against FSU, uh, well, Tommy. Uh, D- Duke, well, Duke has not had the greatest road record covering, so I'll I'll grab the five and a half points here and okay. and, and uh, hope they uh, put up a big fight. All right. Yeah, Duke's two and four against the spread uh, away, but FSU's. I just don't five, like the way you, uh, FSU's playing. They're not playing well at all, but no. their defense is is decent. They have a decent defense. Duke has a staunch defense and. But I that, was looking at that game too. I, I didn't want to pull I almost made that one of my plays. I, I do lean with Tommy, but I didn't want to make it one of my official plays just because I have a hard time betting against Duke. It's just tough. They're know? the type of team that sticks it to you one way or another. You jump on them, they can't get the job done. You go against Duke, they find the way to beat you every time. But this is Crazy. kind of that situation we were talking about. Ranked team going to Unranked. It's kind of that situation we well, were just but that's talking a, about. That, but that's a good number on that game. Duke it is. at five and a half is. I think that's a real number. I think that's a solid number, and I think that makes sense. I think between you and me, looking at numbers, and I'm a numbers guy, I think Duke wins this game by double digits. I just think they're too wow. much firepower, and I, I just don't see FSU staying with them. They're not playing well right now. I see Duke moving up. Like I said, I look for momentum on teams. I like to see that you know that stride, and I see the stride right now with Duke. And I think they're getting it all together. And I think they're going to pour it on in this game and make a statement. They want to get into the top 10. They want to, you know, build their numbers going into these tournaments. So I like Duke in that game yeah, big time. That game's a tough – I'm back and forth on that one. That's a no touch If that game me. was like three and a half or something, I'd probably agree with you guys. And I would think that maybe FSU has a shot. But I think five and a half on a game like that makes a lot of sense, given FSU five and a half at home. I think that makes them weak in my mind based on numbers. And I think that Duke – Great carry point. That game. Let, now, guys, for, for those of you watching this, you might be thinking logically, why would Scotty want to take FSU if the line was lower? That's how the, the average person thinks. But the way we think is we try to get inside of the Real range right. of the odds makers. So we look at it as if the number is bigger, like if FSU was only plus three, that's showing some respect to FSU, and then we're going to show respect to FSU also. Whereas because of the fact that they made them plus six, we're saying, hey, they're not showing FSU any respect. Maybe we shouldn't show them any respect either. That's what that's what Scotty means by that for the new player that that, that doesn't make sense to. Yeah, I mean, it's all numbers, guys. At the end of the day, you think the Vegas is putting out a number, and Tommy could tell you that. He knows better than all of us when it comes to the, the betting number side of it. But at the end of the day, they're putting out a number on a game, don't forget, to get attract money both ways. So they're trying to put out a fair number where they think they're going to get the action coming right down the middle. Because these sports books basically are looking to get the action down the middle. I mean, that's what it really boils down to. But there's certain numbers that you can really see if they're trap numbers based on our experience. Don't forget, we're doing this a long, long time. So we look for certain numbers on certain teams against certain opponents. And, and in my eyes, this number favors Duke for me based on how I look at things. Tommy, what's your thoughts on when they, you know, I, I, you know, on the numbers, like when they put a certain number on games? Oh, yes, especially these big, uh, these big t- games that are going to be on national TV. They want equal action, but many nights you could catch them when they're off. 
I mean, this is going to be a difficult game. I'm, I'm not saying this is a great, great, uh, I wouldn't put it out as a 10 star match, but, uh, let, let's see in the end who, who shows up. If I could throw one other game out there, this is really a game that is not ranked. It's the battle of Michigan, uh, central Michigan, Western Michigan, Western Michigan has just been in total shambles here. All right. Central Michigan has won like five games in a row. They're at home. I didn't have an exact number at the time, but Central Michigan covers that game tomorrow against Western Michigan. Western Michigan has no defense. That's a game that I kind of like. No one's really going to be looking at it. Central Michigan minus the points. Okay. Strong play, uh, light play. Yeah, I, I, I like Central Michigan because, you know, where I, I where you find value in college basketball are on these secondary type of games. We've been riding these plays out. I've been putting a lot out on my Instagram channel. We're catching blowouts every night or or underdogs that are winning outright. So you got you got to find the value in college hoops. All right, Teddy, anything uh, on your oh, mind? He's so right. I love small schools, but for this show, if you want the good quality small school bets, you got to come to me directly. For this show here, uh-huh. for this show here, I'm talking some big ones. So I actually want to talk about that Marquette game. I'm on the opposite side. Do-do-do-do-do. I'm on the opposite side of Tommy on that oh, one. You like, uh, I like Connecticut? I like Marquette plus like the points. Marquette. Tommy okay. likes UConn. I like Marquette plus the points. Um, I think it's a lot of points uh, for for this matchup here. And Marquette has, yeah, UConn might want to prove something, but Marquette, if they win this game, you know, if they don't win this game, they have no chance of winning the Big East. But if they win this game, they do have a solid chance of taking that Big East crown. They put up a lot of points. They're a quality team. The big problem with Marquette, 72, 73% free throw shooting. Yeah. If Marquette that, that, that comes to haunt you too. If Mar- when they it foul does. Shooting. If they make their Very free throws to make those one on one. So important. They only really have one good Tyler Collette, really one good free throw shooter in the in the high eighties. The rest are lower. That's that's another great point you, you made for handicap and purposes, because when you got a team that's an outstanding foul shooting team that's consistent versus a team that's inconsistent foul shooting and there's a certain number on a game, that could be the difference maker. Especially on like a minus three, minus four. Minus five. The way a lot of these teams, guys, very important, the way a lot of these teams, and I'll come back to this game, the way a lot of these teams cover these spreads in college basketball are the free throws at the end. Yeah. So you're going to have a a two-point lead and not a lot of time left. And then they start putting them on the line. And that player, those players making those free throws is going to make the difference between whether that team covers the spread of four or not. Now back to this game. If Marquette can hit some more free throws and increase that free throw percentage a little bit, I think they keep this a close game. I'm not saying they're going to win, but I think it's going to be a close game. I like Marquette to cover 7.5. I would buy it to 8, a little half a point purchase. Okay. And another game that I love is Auburn at home, one of the toughest places to play. Kentucky, who has been faltering lately, yeah, definitely. they're calling for Calipari's head right now. Really? They're calling for John Calipari's head. This is some, of some the, rumblings, huh? There's some rumblings. This is some of the worst. And he's coach what, Cal's the highest, been there. highest paid coach in college basketball, he, probably. If not one of them. One of them. Yeah. Um, you know. And he's been a fixture there for many, many years. He's been years. a fixture. You know, they lost to Gonzaga, which wasn't terrible. But then they also lost to some SEC teams. Yeah, they, they were up I think they down. lost, like, Tennessee, a couple other teams. They've lost, like... Like five out of their last, uh, out of their last ten or something. I'll pull they're up. five and five in their last yeah, ten. Yeah, they lost five uh, out of their last ten. That's not. And they lost a bunch at home, I think, right? Like two in a row. Just or something. so you guys are watching this, that is not good for Kentucky. Kentucky is not used to losing five out of ten games in the regular season this, at this point. Um, and here's another thing: Kentucky's a team that likes to run around, shoot, shoot threes, almost like that Golden State Warrior style of basketball. And Auburn's a a rough team. They don't mind throwing elbows. They don't mind playing aggressive and rough. And they're dominating the spread at home. They're 6-0 against the spread at home. They're the only SEC team not to lose at home this year. And Kentucky is 1-5 against the spread. Yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough trip. Auburn. Tough place. Tough place for Kentucky. I like Auburn a lot here. It's it's a lot of points, minus 8.5, but I think I think they're going to win by double digits. I, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you on that one myself. I think Auburn is a very strong team right now. They just, and like I said, they're peaking. They're, they're moving in a good direction. Kentucky is just kind of playing level. 
They're, you know, they're up and down. They're, they're struggling at the best. They're going into a tough environment, hostile environment. And uh, you know Auburn's going to come all jacked up to try to beat them and beat them soundly. So, yeah, I, I think if Auburn's right in this game, and that num- that's a good number. I mean, uh, it's a high number against the Kentucky. When do you see Kentucky getting eight and a half points? You're very That's really, another reason I like right, it because right. it's so high. If it was Auburn minus now, five. It could be a trap, you know, that they're trapping you because, they, you know, everyone's looking at it to take Auburn because they think Kentucky's not that good. So, you know, there could be some value there. But I, I'm going to agree that Auburn is the right side of the game. I think the casual fan jumps on Kentucky, though. They see Kentucky plus nine points, and I think they just jump on that because they're not really paying attention to what's going on. Yeah, they're just going to get lured into it. And then one more play that I kind of like. I like, you know, Kansas, I think they're like one-point favorite or maybe one-point dog against this Oklahoma team. One and a half right now. One and a half-point favorite. So so Kansas, so two teams that have been really skidding are Kansas and UNC. They both were number one seeds, projected number one seeds. Now they're both... (laughs) projected number three seeds and I think Kansas wants to kind of take it back right they were playing really good they've had and a little Bill bit of Self slide. lost the control the other night they threw him out yeah remember? he got all jacked up yeah Call because against he, the refs that's what happens when when big they teams got blown lose out like what they lose Texas Tech right they not sure the them. score but yeah they lost yeah. to Texas Tech. they got blown up by like 26 or 28 so yeah, they, both of these teams I mean Oklahoma's two and five in their last seven against the spread. Kansas is one and five in their last six on the road. None of, like both of these teams have been having issues. They've yeah. been having injuries. Now a couple of Kansas's players that were hurt are coming back. Oklahoma has injury issues also. Public money is all over Oklahoma in this game. So I'm rolling with Kansas. It's a light bet, but my, my really big bet is uh, Auburn minus those points. I'm going to agree with you on the Auburn play, definitely. I think, uh, like I said, if they're right in that in that particular situation, they could roll and win that game by at least 12 or more points. One other game I really liked, I think Tent- here's a team that's been playing dynamite and uh, seems like they're on the upswing as well and playing real strong of late. I like Tennessee to win blowout that game. Tennessee in a big blowout. Uh, the line is like 21 points. I would probably get that line up like 20, 20 and a half. I would jump all over Tennessee. I think that they're going to win. If they're right in this game, they win this game by 28 to 30 points and an absolute rump. A lot of big favorites haven't been covering lately, though, in college basketball. Man. Yeah, you just got to find the right ones. You know, the, the right ones. That's it. You got to find the right teams peaking at the right, right time. Yes. <laughs> you haven't found it yet? I figured, wait, wait a minute, I got to ask you, how well, was, hey, I, how was I, I the might, Super Bowl party, by the way? Not I, to jump I, gears I, here. I, I, it, let's say, say, like, say, like, I might find it next week, man. You never know, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I we're, might find it next week. It might cost me, but I'll find it. Hey, you know what? Sometimes it's <laughs> worth sometimes, sometimes it's worth pay, paying. Pay. Sometimes right. happiness, it's worth paying to have a little happiness, man. Well, listen, right, ben? We're, going to, we're going to Sin City, people. So, uh, yeah, pulling out all the stops. You want to talk about that now or you want to wait? Well, no, I, you, you guys continue. continue so Tommy's going to say, when and he gets back from Vegas, they say you can't buy no happiness, man. but I proved them wrong. Um, yeah. Listen, well. I, I want to bring up, uh, I want to bring up, the Florida Panthers. So, so Ben, you oh, tell yeah. Ben, do you do the 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 Cats and Bolts show? I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they obviously had a lot to talk about this week because the Panthers are playing the Lightning. So the Cats are playing the Bolts tomorrow, five or six o'clock, I think, somewhere around there. The Panthers right now are the best team in hockey. I don't think there's any arguing with that. Hot, and, hot. and they're not only hot, but if you watch them play. They're playing harder and more aggressive than I've ever seen. They have this identity of almost like the villain of the NFL, of, of the NHL. They're like the villain. They're they're, you know, they're playing physical, and people are they're pissing teams off, and it's causing yeah. teams to react. And when the teams react, they get the penalty called against them, and you know they're dominating four nothing, five to two, big domination, ten and zero on the road. Now the only thing scary to me about this game. They are three and seven in their last ten against Tampa Bay, but it doesn't matter because yeah, but they're playing so great right playing, now on the road. They're playing a different type of hockey right now. Yeah, they have the number two defense in the league, and uh, Matthew Kachuk is really like he he's obviously a finesse goal scorer type of player, but he doesn't mind getting down and dirty. Also, he's to me the coolest player in hockey at the moment. Just 
because of, of the way he plays. I love watching him. I'll tell you. I, I love I, watching the team, and I'm not just yeah. saying it because it's in my back. No, no. you got to give him props, man. I mean, uh, they won 10. I think they won their 10th game in a row on the road without a loss. I mean, that's that's incredible. Think about in the NHL, if you have a 500 record or a little better throughout the season, I mean, that's considered a pretty good achievement because you're going to win, you know, better teams are going to win the majority of their home games. So even on the road, if you're like, uh, let's say, 60%, you win 60% of your games. But the Panthers, I mean, they've been just killing it. And, and they're, win- they're dominating their games 4 nothing. I think their last couple of games were shutouts, nothing, right? 5 to 2 Yeah. I, I, and they had a backup goalie, and they didn't even have Bobrovsky in there. And they won 4 nothing last night. I think they beat Buffalo, right? Was Buffalo? Yeah, Buffalo Sabres, and a lot of these, the a lot of people say like this, they have pro- possibly have the. They're best chasing backup. the Bruins right now. They're two points behind yeah, the Bruins. They possibly, but but since the twenty third of December, they have the best record in the league. They started a little slow, um, and that's the other thing. Their backup goalie is really really good. Yeah, he could be a starter on on most teams. Yeah. Well, that's um, that's the key, and that's important. Hot goalies uh, towards the end of the year. Can I told you that like. Earlier in the year, a hot goalie in the NHL, man, they could carry a team to a whole different level that you didn't even think you were going to get to. So that you know, that's that's clutch when you have a hot we goalie. Need, we need to get Coach Serena back on the show uh, once the season gets rolling. Definitely, definitely, she has way, she, she has a lot more good. hockey knowledge than we do. Yeah, she's Canadian and uh, she she she's very good. So we'll definitely reach out. To it se- it seems like though it's the the top six teams that are just dominating the NHL. It's really outside of that. It's just you know these other teams are like there, but they're not really there. I mean, it seems like these tops, the Rangers, you know, staying on top, uh, the Bruins, the Panthers, uh, Winnipeg, Vancouver, Vancouver. you know, yeah, Vegas. So that brings me to the top ten most profitable teams in hockey as of today. February 16th, number one, still the Vancouver Canucks, as it was a couple weeks ago when I went on this list. But climbing to number two, the Florida Panthers. New York Rangers, number three. Winnipeg Jets, number four. Dallas Stars, number five. Edmonton Oilers, three Canadian teams in the top six. Colorado, seven. Boston, eight. Vegas, nine. Carolina, ten. Now, here's the real surprise. Profitability-wise... As far as units, more units than any other team on this list, the St. Louis Blues. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, they're, they're in the middle of the pack, kind of below the middle of the pack kind of team. But like I said, I, I think it's going to be the teams that are do- staying on top of their divisions right now look like the dominating teams. What is it, like about 30 games left in the regular season, if not less than that? Um, the NHL, I think they're about 50 or so, 55 games in. There might be about 25, 25 28 games left. They're about in the... 50, yeah, they're about 55 games in right yeah, now. Yeah, so you got, an eight, what do you got, an 81-game season in the uh, NHL? 82 some, games? I think it's 80-something. 80 81, yeah. I think it is. Now, here's an interesting, some interesting numbers. Uh, future to win the Stanley Cup. So Florida Panthers are only... You get good odds at Bet Rivers. You could actually get plus eleven hundred on the Florida Panthers to win the Stanley Cup. The favorite right now across the board is the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah, because they won like what they win like fifteen, like sixteen 10, in a row. They won like and then they lost 30, yeah, fourteen in a row, fifteen in a row, something like the, that. The problem with some of these teams, I mean, they play good during the regular season, like the Panthers. I mean, last year, yeah, they got to the finals, but you know, they they have they have pretty good regular seasons. You better take something for that, Tommy. We got to get you well, some chicken noodle well, soup or some tea and honey over there. Well, the Panthers, the, the Panthers, just the honey, the hell the tea. <laughs> the Panthers last year, they just sneaked in. They didn't have a great regular season. They sneaked in at eight. Yeah, and they and they went but to the cup. Before that, though, they had the really year good before regular seasons. that, they won the Presidents Cup, which and is lost, the jinx, and lost in the first or second round. Right, and the Bruins. Won the President's Had Cup the last year. Best record ever. Best record of all time, and they lost Knocked in the out. first round. Yeah, so you never know. Take that for what you will. Just you just got to get in. You don't got to worry about winning every game and being the top seed. You you got to get in and worry about the rest there. I want to talk to the Big Kahuna because the Big Kahuna has got uh, pretty uh, pretty exciting news for us as far as the show and some directions we're going in. So Big Kahuna, if you want to take the uh, the stage, as they say. Uh, give it, give the audience a little notice on what's going on with us and uh, the directions that we're going in. Well, yeah, we, we've been invited to go out to Vegas next week. And, and I want to shout out to Podcast Junkies because 
this is the studio we use in Boca Raton, but they have a sister studio in Las Vegas. So the Vegas studio invited us to come out and we're going to be on their show, Action Junkies. All right. And they have some very interesting guests. We're going to be out there for about three days and we're going to be shooting a lot of different content and various sports books. But I'm real excited because it's taken us to a new level. Vegas, no doubt, the entertainment capital of the world. Unfortunately, we're a week late from the Super Bowl, but that's okay. There's going to be a really good show. We're going to be talking about just the Vegas environment for betting and just the whole entertainment, what's going on out there. We will have some picks we will putting out, but a must, must uh, watch. We're going to be taping it on Thursday, so it'll probably be out next Friday. And uh, once again, shout out to Podcast Junkies, who's making this happen. Very, very cool. The only thing that that studio in Vegas does not have is our producer, Ben, and the other producer, Christian. Who There you go. They're, they're the guys maybe that ben, really keep ben, coming here every you, week. Ben, maybe uh, jump on that plane and get come on out with us. Hey, if Tom, like, if Tommy D is taking is Tommy care of B it, foot in the bill, Tommy. <laughs> if he's taking care of it, you you sign me up. I'll be there. My, my suitcase is big enough for you, Ben. So let me know. Uh, he's got all his hair products in there, Ben. Yeah, yeah. God knows what else is in there because he's looking uh, to have a good uh, time you know, for a short old, time. The old saying: When you go to Vegas, you got to have some equipment. So uh, yeah. The last time Tommy went to Vegas, he drove in in a two hundred thousand dollar custom Mercedes and yeah. went home in a three hundred thousand dollar Greyhound. It wasn't a good weekend. Yeah. Very bad. Yep. Yeah. That was the last time. So I don't well, know what happened. Tell me not to come back into this town, but uh, no. All right, Look yeah, guys. Happened. We're excited about it. We're going to be in Viva Las Vegas next week. We're going to be doing a bunch of stuff out there, like Tommy said. Uh, Teddy's not going to join us because Teddy's got to hold the fort back I'll be here. there on Zoom. You're going to be there I'll on be the there Zoom? I'll be there on Zoom. There yeah, you go. Definitely going to have Teddy on Zoom. And... Uh, yeah, it's going to be really big, and uh, we're going to be exploring a couple of different, you know, areas. I'm going to be shooting from uh, a bunch. I'm going to go down to the Circa. We, I have a very good friend that is in management down there, so we're going to be shooting at the Circa Sportsbook, and uh, we're going to be checking out just the different venues down there. Uh-huh. It's definitely going to be an interesting uh, trip. Sounds great. Cool. Looking forward to it. I hope we get on the road uh, with, with your budget a little more this year and we make this uh, show a little more exciting because uh, I think the people need to see us out there. You know, I mean, we're in the studio. It's great here. Like you said, Ben does an unbelievable job for us each and every time. But at the end of the day, man, we got to get out there, let the people, uh, you know, see what's cooking in the world we're in. But we got a few minutes left, guys, so I want to get to – is there anything on your mind you want to talk oh, about? Oh, yeah. All you right. know there's always know, something on my mind. I, I know he's got something up his sleeve. He was sitting there quiet. <laughs> All right. I bet, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a, like one of those cars that used to wind up, wind up, wind up, and you just let just it go. Just wait for it to go. All yeah. right. So, guys, I there's a lot of trolls on social media, and I don't – I try not to let it bother me because I'm blessed to be able to do what I do, you know, make money from the sports betting and, and I share it. And some people just don't like it and they hate on it. That's fine. But when people spread misinformation that can affect other people and what to expect in sports betting, I have to call it out. So producer Ben put this comment. So I had a video. I'm, 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 can you see that? I'm comma? 60. Yeah, you could. The people watching it'll be able. We can't see it, but the All people right. watching will be able to see it. So I'm like 67 percent in my last like 80 games or something. I don't know the exact numbers, but if you guys go on there, you'll see. Was that comment made towards you? Yeah. So pull pull it back up real quick, Ben. So this comment said 60. Yeah. Hold on. All right. So this comment said. 65% sounds like it's not even worth it, boss. Find a better career. Youngins nowadays be making 10x what you probably want to make. So, so, the, and not, the, n- let me tell you something. Let me stop right there. Not in the sports betting world, you're not. Right. If you're hitting 65% and you're playing right and you manage your money right, let me tell you something. You're making, you're making real money. So the question is, why does this kid who Ben put up the other picture, he's a young kid, clearly, zero posts, 183 followers, and he has a Fliff link in his 
bio. I don't even know what that's all. I know what Fliff is. It's like a fake sports betting website. But anyway, so my point is like th- this young kid is obviously being fed misinformation on the internet about higher percentages, 80%, 90%. And there's a lot of people out there being fed this information. So guys, let me explain something. No one is going 80%. No one is going 90% long term over the course of a season or year in sports betting. It's not going to happen. No. I, you know, unless you're playing minus 500 favorites, which you're going to crush yourself doing. So I just want to, for anyone watching this, get the misinformation out there. You do not want to be believing people that are saying that you can go 90% betting sports. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. I'll tell you, I've got a better one. Let them come. To, if they could do that, great. We'll we'll take them. We'll hire them. We'll hire them, and we'll we'll go with them right to the window. We'll even we'll stop doing what we're doing. Yeah, if we'll, they can we'll, do that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's I'm surprised you even let that get to you, my friend. This I don't let it get too, to me. I, I get wanna, that all the time. I want to educate people because there are people that believe that it could happen. Yeah. And I want to teach people like don't expect that because right. it's not going to happen. And I think we're doing a good thing for people. Hey. And we're trying on a future podcast. I do want to talk more about how we help people become smarter, better, but we'll save that for another day. Yeah. I I mean, you know, the bottom line, guys, come on. Realistic. If you're if you're playing daily a lot of games and you're all over the road, there is no chance you're going to make money betting in in the long run. Yeah, you could have a great day. We all know that everyone could say, oh, I hit this thing. You know, I I made all this money today. Tell me what you're doing 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days a from year. now. A year. Whatever. One day especially means absolutely if nothing. Parlays. What? I mean, especially if they're betting parlays, which most young guys are. Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't even matter because at the end of the day, one good day is not going to make or break your entire season if, if you're playing on a daily basis. And that's not. what I tell, tell guys. Guys, listen, if, you lose, if we lose today – you don't write it off. It's one loss. You know, you, you follow a system and you money manage and you play correctly. And if you do all that and we do our numbers the way we expect to do, you're going to be profitable. That's right. it. Bottom line. All right. Anyways, we'll talk more about that yeah. on future shows. All right. We got to wrap it up because I'm getting a dirty look from Ben. I know he's got a <laughs> date tonight. He's uh, he's taking her out to some fancy dancy restaurant. So we want to get out of here. Sponsored so, by uh, Tommy uh, D. Tommy D's foot in the bill. I can't get him to foot anything, man. Well, I don't we know still owe you, you that steak. We'll get that covered. There you go. I'm still, guys, can you believe I'm still waiting for the uh, bring, divisional br- Bring it home, round, Scotty. Yeah, divisional round to Tomahawk at the uh, NYY Steakhouse. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Tommy, tell the people out there where they can find you and get all your great information you're providing on a daily basis. Well, Instagram has to be the go-to place, OSB underscore sports. I put up multiple videos daily, free picks. Uh, my YouTube channel, OSB dash sports. And check out the website, guys. We have this odds feed. You could shop numbers, good articles up daily, online sportsbet.com. But next week, you want to definitely check out our show. Viva Bye. Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. There you go. Thanks again for coming on. I know you're not 100%. Just shows you the trooper you are, and we appreciate that. It must go on. Let's go to the man over here, my man, Teddy Brooks. Where can the people find your outstanding work each and every day trying to give the players the betting edge? You can find me at youtube.com slash at the sports profits or Instagram, the underscore profits underscore picks pick no s 45 and 21 in our last 66 plays kicking ass man with two ivy league games pending tonight love you guys all right and don't forget next week you got to be here holding the fourth down for us yes the big kahuna and i are rolling out in las vegas all right guys i'm scott matthews i am the host of this great show the osb sports podcast you can also find me i put out daily plays Every day, daily free plays on on uh, TikTok, which is SM Picks. That's my handle, SM Picks, P-I-C-K-S, and on Instagram, SM Sports Picks, P-I-C-K-S. It's a pleasure doing this show each and every week with you guys. 
And check it all out on all podcast forums. That's right, all podcast forums, whether it's Spotify, Apple. This is the one and only OSB Sports Podcast. We'll see you back here next week. Perfect timing.